There's a great spirit of worship here. Worship is our natural response to His divine presence. I want to read what I printed in the bulletin because it really shares my heart. Um, the Johnson family showed up at Fort Payne Church of God in August of 2005. Haley was a senior at MVCA. Logan was a, in the 8th grade at Fort Payne Middle School. That's just hard to ma imagine. Both Haley and Logan since graduated from high school, met and wed their spouses and made us grandparents. The emptiness has become a reality in the parsonage. G. Fort Payne Church of God has grown in every way during this time. Growth always means change, and change always means challenge. I want you to get those words in your mind. Growth, change, and challenge. They're always together. You cannot grow without change. You cannot change without challenge. And we have faced those challenges with love and faith in both God and each other. The Fort Payne Church of God will not be defined by our challenges, but by our responses to those challenges. Since 2005, we have said hello and welcome to many new faces and families. We have also said goodbye and farewell to some of our precious Fort Payne Church of God family members. I'm convinced that we must always spend at least as much time looking forward as we do looking back. People who live their lives looking back never really progress. Today we take time to do both, and as we do that, I'm reminded of these lyrics, through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace that brought me safe this far, and grace will lead me home. Through sadness, sickness, transition, trials, accomplishments, and many victories, we have arrived at this 10-year milestone. Numerically, we have more than doubled in a decade. Let's do it again. Can you say amen? Amen? How many of you want to do it one more time? I want to share my heart with you for a few minutes today, and um, I believe, and when I say share, I mean just that, I, I, I just want to share the, the heart of this, this leader. First of all, I want to share that I feel that some of you have come here today with a heavy load, and I pray that you would allow the Holy Spirit to lift that load from you. I cannot do that. We cannot do that. A song within itself cannot do that, but the Holy Spirit will, He can, and He will do that. He can give you answers for your questions. He can bring in alignment those things that are not. He can give you the faith to believe what you cannot see with your natural eyes. Many times, most of the time, God does not align things so we can see it, so we can feel better. Usually, usually He aligns things and we don't see it. And we need to believe it by faith and trust Him for that. And I believe that He can take care of whatever situation that you bring today. In my spirit, I sense that maybe you're here and you're carrying a, an, un, an unusual baggage. Maybe something uh, that you're not accustomed to. fact is, I just want us to pray for one another right now. I sense in my spirit that maybe you're here today and you need God to speak to you. And I just want you to take somebody by the hand if you can do that. Father, I pray over this flock today. I do not take lightly your grace. I do not take lightly your spirit. I sense, Lord, that you are leading. That maybe there are those here today that really want and really need to be delivered. I pray, Lord, that you would grant that, that you would bring into alignment, that you would meet the needs maybe there are those that have got questions concerning their income or questions concerning their employment or questions concerning their health or questions concerning their family, maybe questions concerning their marriage and their relationships. I pray that you would give answers. We look to you who is the author and the finisher of our faith. We look to you who you are our personal Lord and our Savior. You're not just a Savior, you are our Savior. And we look to you. We, we come to you because your word says that you are a very present help in time of trouble. And today, we're not here to celebrate a man. We're not here to celebrate a family. We're here to celebrate Jesus. We're here to celebrate you. And we lift you up. And as we lift you up, I believe you're drawing. I believe, Lord, that you're working. And I believe, Lord, that, that even now, your spirit is moving upon situations. We pray for those in the hospital, those in the nursing homes, those in the jails. 
We pray for those that are in their homes not able to be here today. Touch them and the church said amen. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Maybe I can preach now. Maybe I can share a little bit because you see, what we're celebrating today is we're really celebrating leadership. We're not, we should not be celebrating any, any achievements or any attributes of a man or of a man and a woman. It's fine to appreciate, and, and we accept that. We, we are grateful for affirmation and appreciation, but we are all really gathered here today to honor Jesus Christ and to lift him up and to say to him, thank you for providing the callings and the gifts of leadership because you see, folks, without leadership, you'll never progress. You'll never go forward. And while it is true that some people do not want to be led, some people do not want to be fed, they still need to be led, and they still need to be fed. And so what you do is you do that with love, and you do that with compassion. Even though I do not consider myself an expert, I finally figured out a few years ago that if God called me to do this, I need to try my best to get it right. And if I'm going to have to do it, I might as well try to do it God's way. And when it comes to leadership, it, you know, you can't be in leadership without being out front. When you're in leadership, you're going to be out front. Well, if you're out front, you're an easy target. And so if you're out front, you're going to take shots. You're going to take, uh, you're going to take some things that's going to be awkward sometimes. It's going to be a struggle sometimes. You're going to have to, sometimes you've got to be conflicted when, when, when conflict is the last thing that you want. You know, but you got to find a balance not to be uh, a bully and not to be uh, uh, a variety of terms you could use, I guess. Uh, not, not to be some obnoxious person that, 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 that is trying to make everything his way. I understand that this is not my church. I have an understanding today that this is God's church. And sometimes as a leader, we have to make decisions and declarations and... and, and, and and, and share our heart, and sometimes we're misunderstood, and sometimes it's just awkward when you are understood. But as leaders, God calls us to lead in a loving way where people will follow. You see, if, if, you're, if people will not follow you, then you're not leading. If you've got a position on your job and you say, I'm a leader, well, how many are following you? See, if, you're, if, you're not, if you, people aren't following you, then, you're just, then you just got a title. And... Uh, I don't want a title. I never wanted a title. Uh, titles become necessary sometimes, but I, I, I want to lead people out of bondage. And uh, I can't please everybody. I wish I could. And uh, uh, that's the desire of my heart is to please God and to please people. You just can't always do that. And, um, and so when I'm sharing today, I want to share my vision because anytime you have leadership, one of the most important parts of leadership I'm not going to do an exhaustive leadership teaching today, but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you that it is the most important part of leadership. I understand integrity is vital. I understand that a lot of other things are vital. But there, there is no leadership if you don't have vision. There is no progress if you don't have vision. The Four Paint Church of God. By the way, I love our logo. Our logo was created by Sister Sarah Phillips. This is Kate Snow's daughter, and she is a graphics designer, and she did a great job. When I look at that logo, I see Lookout Mountain and Sand Mountain and everything in between. God's called us to this region. Proverbs 29 and 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. And when there is no vision, there is no leadership. And leaders who try to lead without vision, they try to lead with just skill and something they've learned in seminary and something, that's fine. But let me tell you, what was the first thing I preached at Fort Payne Church of God? Vision. If you look back on the record, you will find the first message I preached here 10 years ago was we must have a vision. What I believe, and we give God all of the praise, what I believe led us through the storm and what led us through the fire and what led us through that dark season, I believe was the fact that we had a vision about where we were going. Now I'm tell you, this doesn't always feel natural and it doesn't always, it's not always as comfortable. But you know, the, the bus driver needs to know where you're going. 
Amen? Uh, we own a bus. And God called me to drive this bus. I'm not, I'm not all confident. I'm not all in your face with that. But how many of you know that somebody's got to drive the bus? And I'm here to tell you that if the driver doesn't know where you're going, then you're going to be doing circles. And you're going to waste a lot of fuel. And you're going to waste a lot of ground. And you're going to waste a lot of time. So there has to be a vision. The only way we can have vision is to say, God, I need you to give me vision. I need you to show me where we are to lead these people. And we have done that to the best of our ability. We have done that. Let me say it like this. We have done that for the last 10 years, and I always want to be faithful in doing that to the best of my ability. Where are we going from here? People say, well, I don't really care about vision. I just want us to have a good church. You'll never have a progressive church without vision. You can't have a church trying to be what we were 30 years ago. I don't know when people are going to get this through their minds. Some people are real stubborn about this and they want to try their best to be something that we were 30 or 40 years ago. Listen, God didn't call us to do that. He called us to go forward. He's got greater things ahead of us than are behind us. You say, well, I'm not comfortable with things. We have to, we have to be submissive and surrender to God's will and to God's vision and at some point you're going to have to you're going to have to to, to to be submissive to the leadership that God's placed in your life and that's just the word of instruction and encouragement for everybody here today God's got a better plan than you do some people say I'm going to do my own thing my own way you're going to be in your own mess you're going to be in your own disaster God's got a plan and I've been praying and seeking God as I have for the last 10 years and we have from time to time introduced vision and today I want to do the same I don't have any big announcements we're not changing the name of the church somebody say amen, amen. We're, not, we're, we're not changing the color we're not doing anything that ought to upset anybody this ought to be encouragement to you but we need to know where we're going and we need to have some kind of direction because where there's no vision the people perish we have, we've come up now I just changed at the last minute I love the, the the graphics that Sister Emily fixed for us, what we call 2020 vision. You're going to be hearing a lot over the next, really, the next few years, you're going to be hearing a lot about 2020 vision because 2020 vision is when you've got clarity. It's when you understand who you are and where we're going. This is my vision. I'm here to share my vision. You say, well, Pastor, is it all about you? It's not about me at all, but God speaks to people and speaks through people and if he speaks to you, I want to hear. I want to, I, I want to know what God is speaking to you. My vision for Fort Payne Church of God is very simple, and that is that we become a house of prayer and restoration. That's my vision. I must be honest with you. We are not a house of prayer and restoration. I hate to be negative on such a positive day, but the truth is, we are not what God has called us to be. We're doing good. We're doing great. I would say that in every area, there's ministries that are thriving and people are going forward. But folks, what God wants for us is so far beyond where we're at today. And I want to share some of that vision. How many of you want to be a part of a church that at least has a vision, who at least knows who they are and where they're going? See, it's not enough to have a vision uh, of a new building and we've got some we've got some of that going on it's not enough just to have the vision of a new property because you see the building is not the church the church is made up of the people and the only way people's lives are going to be changed is through the power of the Holy Spirit and that comes through prayer and restoration I understand more than ever before that I do not have the answers when I come to this pulpit a few minutes ago and I said some of you brought questions some of you brought problems I understand more than anybody here that I do not have what it takes to fix your problem I do not have what it takes to fix your marriage. I do not have what it takes to get your mind. I do not have, but the Holy Spirit does. It's not by might nor by power, but it's by my Spirit, said the Lord. And that preaches good and it shouts good and it sings good, but we have to enact it. We have to embrace it. It has to become a, become a part of our theology. It has to become a part of our services. We can't just talk about it. If God is going to help you, it's going to be by your, His Spirit. And if you're going to get help, it's going to be by His Spirit. That's why we must become a house of prayer Amen. and restoration. 
<clears throat> 1 Timothy 2 and 8 said, I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. This verse has been dominating my life for about three months. The Holy Spirit has put it in me every day, all day, every day. And finally, I've gotten to the point, I said, Lord, what are you trying? What? There was a day a few weeks back when I said, Lord, what in the world are you trying to tell me? And he spoke to me so plain and said, I am saying literally, this is what I want the Fort Payne Church of God to become. Is a people, men and women who pray, who pray everywhere, who lift up holy hands without wrath, without anger, without frustration, and, and without doubt, but with faith. This is what God wants us to become. Are you interested in becoming that? Why do we need to become that? But we wrestle not with flesh and blood. The Bible says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not the flesh, but divinely powerful for those destruction, for, for the destruction of fortresses or strongholds. What I felt while I go when I stood in this pulpit is the presence of strongholds. That's what I'm feeling in my spirit. Romans says this in Romans 13 and 12, the night is almost gone. Somebody say amen. And the day near. Therefore let us lay aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave properly as in the day, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual promiscuity and sensuality, not in strife and jealousy. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh in regard to its lust. That's what God has called us to. He said, then he said to me, Zechariah, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, saying, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. This is the reasoning, the motivation behind this vision. For the flesh sets its desire against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another so that you may not do the things that you please. That's the day we live in and that's the battle that we fight. And the spirit and the flesh are fighting. We must become, do you hear my heart? We must become a house of prayer and restoration. It's not enough just to have ministries. It's not enough just to have programs. It's not enough just to have a comfortable place. And I thank God for all of the above. It's definitely not enough to have money in the bank. And yes, we've got some money in the bank. Thank God for that. God gave us, you gave us, you've been faithful, and that money is put there so that it can be spent on ministry and so that it can be sown and not thrown so that it can grow and continue to do the work of the Lord. But if we had a million dollars in the bank this morning, we still would not necessarily have a church. We must be a house of prayer and restoration. It's not enough for one person to do it. It's not enough for ten people to do it. We must become a people consumed with prayer. That's my vision. The Lord tarries, I want to look back in ten years and I want to say, do y'all remember that day ten years ago when we talked about becoming a house of prayer? I want to be able to look back and say, look what God did in ten years. And in today we are a house of prayer. I love what Joshua said when he said, be on alert, stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Turn to your neighbor and say, act like a man. That's going to be hard for some of you to do. But what I'm trying to say and what the Word is saying is, be strong. Don't be a coward. He said, be strong. Don't be afraid. Don't run away from this fight. God's calling us to be a house of prayer and restoration. Have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not tremble or be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen one day real soon. One day real soon there's going to be earth shaking news and, and it, is going to, it is going to shake this planet in more ways than one. Now the truth is these types of things are already happening but the truth is, we're blinded. We're blinded. This week in the Middle East, 
this week in Israel, since we were here last Sunday, did you know that they have had record temperatures in the Middle East this week? This week in Iran, the southern part of Iran, the heat index reached 165 degrees. The second highest reading ever recorded took place this week in southern Iran. The heat index of 165 degrees. That we're about to see war. It is going to involve Iran. It is going to involve Russia. And it will, in my opinion, be before the rapture of the church. Other news can take place. Mountains will fall. You write, is it, write this, you take mental note of what I'm about to Powerful, prophetic, life-changing events are going to happen in the days to come. You know, who's going to, you know who's going to be afraid? You know who is going to tremble? Are those who are not praying. Those who are not in a right relationship with God. You and I are young people. This should not scare you. This should not dismay. This should not defeat. This should not discourage. This should not depress you. You should, the Bible says, when you see these things, lift up your head. For your redemption draweth nigh. I am not talking about fairy tales. I am not talking about something that might happen. I know in my spirit in the day that we're living in and the days to come, you will see life change news and you and I better be praying. Amen. You and I better be on our knees seeking God. You and I better be part of a house of prayer and restoration. You and I better be walking in the Spirit. You and I better be close to God. You don't need to be playing with the world right now. You don't need to be playing on the outskirts of this thing right now. You don't need to be playing with sin right now. You better, you and I better be close to God. And to do that, we need a church that's on fire. We need a church that is praying and seeking God and fasting and seeking God. We don't need a church that's just trying to be happy. You and I don't need a church that's just trying to be correct. We don't need a church that's just trying to feel good. We need to be a church that's praying and a church that is fasting and a church that is seeking God and a church that is being courageous. You try to be courageous without prayer and you will be a fool. I'm going to introduce some initiatives this morning. Number one, we're going to... The number one initiative that I'm presenting today in this vision is that we enhance our prayer line. I'm going to ask Sister Rhonda and the staff to join me in seeing how we might can do this. The prayer line is 845-5949. I want to publish it. I want to enhance this to where people can call and leave a prayer request. And if they so choose and need where they can call and have someone return that call and pray with them over the phone. I want to publish this in the paper. I want to publish it in the city. We want to have a prayer line that is vibrant, a prayer line that is working, and people who are literally actually praying for those who are in need. We're going to revamp our prayer line. The second initiative I want to present this morning is that we establish what's called the Fort, the Fort Payne Church of God Prayer Force. This is just a group of people. It's a commitment that you make. This is not signing a piece of paper yet. We're not to this point. I just want you to make a commitment that you want to join that, that not the Air Force, but the Prayer Force. Yeah. That you want to join a group of people that is committed to praying and fasting and seeking God. Why are you, why did Pastor, why are you talking? You're doing some repetitions. You're just kind of, th no, no, this is the problem. I want everybody to hear my heart right now. This is the problem. The problem is we're not doing it. See, see, if we were doing this, then this would be repetitious. It would be, this would be not necessary. The problem is, is that many are not doing it. You know why? Because it's easier to get up and preach about it and sing about it and have meetings about it 
and go to prayer conference and talk about it and have camp meeting and talk about it and have teachers come and teach about it and write books and read books about it, it's a lot easier to do all that than to actually do it. We're not praying, we're playing. Fort Payne doesn't need a pretend church. Amen. Fort Payne needs a church that's on fire, knows who they are, knows where they're going. They're not just exciting. They're not just they're they're praying and seeking God. Say, Pastor, we got some problems that need to be worked out. Guess what? Prayer and fasting will work them out. Amen. Because you know what? Sometimes we have problems that I can't work out. The, the Lord can work them out. Amen. Yes, there are challenges. But we need to be this house of prayer and restoration. Number three, I'm asking everybody that will to join me beginning September the 1st in fasting one day every week of your life. I want you to hear my heart. If you'll make a commitment to do this, the Lord will lead you. you might, he might lead you to do something different than this. I don't pretend to be telling you an exact specific thing. I'm just telling you we need to commit ourselves to fasting. And I believe that can start with one day per week. Experience, He will lead you into other things. He will lead you into... He'll tell you specifically what days. He'll tell you what to fast for. He'll tell you how to fast. See, that's a personal thing between you and God. This is the third initiative. How many of you know fasting and prayer works? Some things come only by prayer and fasting. I want to be... If, if, if we're known at all, and I'm not real concerned about what we're known for other than the fact, you know, in the book of Acts, the Bible says they had favor with all people. I do believe God can give us favor with our community, and He has. But I'm not as concerned about what we're known for as I am what we're actually doing. Amen. If we are a church that fasts and pray, then we will begin to, con we will actually continue to see great deliverance take place in our midst. Number four, we're going to start what's called Operation Hope. Operation Hope, hour of prayer every day. If you fast one day a week, if you're a part of the prayer force, I'm asking you to commit yourself to one hour of prayer every day. How many of you think that maybe one hour of prayer every day would change your life? I'm going to push it a little bit today. I saw an app the other day advertise an app you can download on your phone that tells you how much time you're spending on Facebook. I remember thinking, I don't want that. Yeah. You know, it's easy to spend an hour on Facebook in 24 days. Somebody told me one time that Facebook was a time stealer and I believe that's right. I believe, I believe, it's, I believe that is an accurate statement. Let's commit ourselves to an hour of prayer every day. The fifth initiative is a big one. And I want you to bear with me. Beginning September 1st, on the first Sunday in September, we are going to start an 8.30 a.m. prayer service. I'm asking everybody that can. Now listen to my heart when I tell you this. I refuse to get caught up in head counting. I refuse to get caught up in making lists, checking it twice. I'm not going to look at you any different in the 1030 service if you weren't here in the 830 service. I'm just asking you to fast and pray. And us, you know, if churches all over this nation can start an early morning service to accommodate their music, the Holy Spirit just spoke to me one day. Fact is, can I just be real honest and tell you, I've told the staff, I've, I've been praying for months on what to do. And for several months, I've talked, uh, I've talked with, with Matthew. We've had very open conversation about this. About starting an 8.30 service. Because I believe that God has called us to do something will quit visiting and, and, and you've, you're, we're stuck in, even in, as full as we are this morning. People don't want to be put on the spot. It's called the goldfish syndrome. 
you can only grow so big in the building you're in. So automatically, I begin to pray about starting a second service. I never could feel the release. I never could feel freedom. I never could feel liberty. I, I kept trying. I talked to people on different ones, and I kept trying to feel. We need an 8.30 service. The Holy Spirit spoke to me one day. He said, if you're willing to start an 8.30 service, then why not start an 8.30 prayer service? If churches are willing to get out and go and play the music they like and to be in the service they like, and, and if pastors are willing to, to change and accommodate what people want, then why don't you accommodate what I want? Oh, right. Lord, this is going to stir my heart. I said, yes, sir. And so beginning the first Sunday in September, as the Lord has directed me, I'll going to begin an 8.30 prayer service. We will continue to have our workers meeting at 9.15. But I'm going to tell you something, people. If we are fasting one day a week, if we are praying one hour a day, and if we have an 8.30 a.m. prayer service, several things are going to happen. Number one, your life's going to be I'm speaking to somebody who needs to hear this. Listen, you do those things and your vocabulary will begin to change. 